Okay, good afternoon again, guys. Um, happy World Fertility Day, and we're back yet again. Um, if you are following us today, we are doing live talks on Instagram. From 2 o'clock, we've been doing live talks on Instagram, as well as Facebook, and it's going to run until half past 8 to this evening. Um, we've got different doctors from all over South Africa. And um, it's also, we also just want to say thank you to these doctors um, for taking time out to do the talks but also how important their work is and how um, with their help that most of our, um, a lot of women can actually have their family and, and have their dream family. So today we are talking, now we're talking to Dr. Quibus Katsia. He's from Vital Lab in KZN. And we're going to be talking about, I had a baby once, can I be infertile now? Um, better known as um, secondary infertility. Um, so, Dr. Kutsia, thank you so much for joining us. It's not the first time we're doing a talk with you, and it's lovely having you as always. So, please, if you can just introduce yourself and tell, tell them where you're from and what it is you do. Oh, thanks so much, Leah. Thanks for having me on this uh, important day and a very busy day for you, it sounds like. Yeah, um, yeah I think a day like today is very important um, to share information to patients and we are very happy here from Vita Lab KZN for me to represent uh, our clinic and uh, um, chat a little bit more about the secondary infertility. So we are from Umschlanga, our uh, clinic is in Umschlanga and yeah, we are three doctors currently uh, uh, working there, Dr. Sky De Jong and Dr. Nola Yolo Siku, and as well as myself. Okay, awesome. So we're going to get straight into it. Um, what is secondary infertility? Oh, oh, that's basically when you've had a baby and now you're trying for another baby and um, not falling pregnant, or it can also be if you don't carry that baby to term, uh, okay. i.e. having miscarriages. Okay, and what are the signs of secondary infertility? I don't know if, if this is phased correctly, um, but what are the signs of secondary infertility? Not 100% sure what the signs are, but obviously um, the, the potential causes of um, secondary infertility is basically the same as that of primary infertility, and we can discuss that a little bit more in length. Um, mm -hmm. But the other thing is also, once you've had a baby, you know, patients kind of think, well, I've done it before, yeah. I should be able to do it again. And when a patient uh, approaches at the clinic to ask uh, about why can't I fall pregnant with the second baby, it's also important for the doctor to get a complete history of what has happened with the previous pregnancy. Especially like us at Vita Lab, we don't deliver the babies, we just uh, help creating them. So um, a full history of the birth of the baby is very important because it may have been a difficult birth, there may have been uh, excessive blood loss, there may have been leading after the delivery of the baby with the pain products, where for example the doctor had to go back to theatre to clean out the uterus and all of those will be red flags for us as a potential cause why patients can't fall pregnant with the second baby. Okay, and then I, I think we've just gone on to what causes secondary infertility, but I think you've actually run through it, but if there's anything else that you want to say about it? Yeah, um, I think there are far more causes than what I've mentioned now, so okay. first of all, um, if we only look at patients that had a baby, um, that it's also important how did they fall pregnant the first time around. You know, if they needed some intervention to fall pregnant the first time around, they may need that same intervention, whether that is ovulation induction, that's where we give medication to help a patient to ovulate, etc. And that can also be a problem uh, with the secondary infertility especially in patients that had the baby and maybe not um, um, back to normal weight after having had that baby, that can also interfere mm -hmm. with ovulation. The other thing is how is the patient coping with this um, newborn baby in the house? Maybe there's a lot of stress and we know that stress can affect the uh, hormones from the brain um, uh, affecting the ovaries and can also lead to um, 
not ovulating regularly. So the doctor has to look at all of those. Okay, and then how long should you wait to see a fertility specialist after trying for your second child? Now, there again, it's very important. How did they fall pregnant previously? If they had to go to the doctor because they were older than 35 years of age, we normally say if you're older than 35, you shouldn't try longer than six months on your own. So I think if you fell pregnant the first time around being older than 35, you should visit the fertility specialist sooner than later. If it is that you were younger than 35 and nothing was um, uh, a problem previously, then yes, after one year of trying, you, you can uh, 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 visit the doctor. But those are all very um, well saying that. But if you notice that there is specifically something wrong um, or you know something that has, that has happened, maybe uh, the husband started going to the gym, maybe using some medication and things like that. Those are obvious signs that uh, the patient needs to visit us uh, sooner. Okay. And then could the male factor also play a role? I know the male is also a, a problem. And in terms of uh, male infertility, we know that up to 40% of couples, there may be a problem with the male factor. And therefore, one should always assess patients as a couple. So both the husband as well as his wife should come in for the consultation. And one of the first things we'll do is to do a sperm analysis of the husband to assess whether that sperm is good enough to make her pregnant at home or not. And if yeah. any treatment options should be uh, offered to the patient uh, to improve the sperm quality. Okay, is there any, um, um, I don't have that on my question list, but is there um, anything in particular that, that you would know, procedure that you would go through when somebody is diagnosed with secondary infertility? What, what would be your, your, you know, your procedure, your plan going forward? Yeah, I think a, a full history from the patient is, is very important because that's where we normally pick up uh, little clues that will guide us as to what direction to follow. So after the, exam, um, the history, we do a full examination. And remember, um, all the primary infertility causes can also be uh, uh, present when patients struggle to fall pregnant for, with their second baby. It also depends on how long, you know, if you only, uh, uh, if you waited three, four, five years between your first and your second pregnancy, there can be endometriosis, there can be fibroids, there can be tubal disease, there can be uh, a problem with the cervix, maybe a traumatic birth the first time around with a tear of the cervix. All of that can cause uh, problems trying to fall pregnant again. Okay, and then our last question is, do you have any words of wisdom for women trying, currently trying to conceive or couples currently trying to conceive? No, I think um, the first thing you don't tell uh, patients trying to have a baby is to relax. But I think, I think the most important thing is to realize when to come for an assessment. Yeah. After the assessment, to get as much information from your doctor as possible. Um, surgery for uh, secondary infertility is hardly ever necessary unless you've had uh, a procedure done during your pregnancy, as I've mentioned, the, the DNC for uh, retained products, etc. But to go and do a laparoscopy for a patient with secondary infertility, there are very, very few indications for that. So, um, yeah, try, and if you're not pregnant, if you're younger than 35, definitely uh, after, um, and patients don't wait for six months, you know, yeah. uh, they are there sooner, but I think if you're older than 35, then should visit the doctor uh, as soon as possible. Awesome, thank you very much, doctor. That is Dr. Kobus Kutsia from Vita Lab in KZN and we spoke about secondary infertility. Thank you very much, Doctor, for, for joining us today and taking the time out um, 
to to speak to us I will be putting in the comment section um, doctor's details if you want to contact the Vita Lab KZN. We will put all the details in the comment section of this. You can also watch the video um, or if it's coming now, later, late, and you have any, um, want to watch the video, you can watch it on YouTube or it will be posted live to um, Instagram and Facebook later. Thank you very much, doctor. Have a great day further. Thanks for having me. Enjoy your rest of your day. Thanks. Bye-bye.